G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our Backyard Farm and Aquaponics YouTube channel. Today's clip is going to be on iron in the aquaponics system. Iron is one of those micro elements that isn't in great amounts in fish feed, so we don't get a lot coming through their waste stream into the hydroponic or the plant growing side of things. There's a couple of other elements that are also deficient in fish, fish feed. Uh, there's um, calcium and potassium, but they're for another clip I think. Now, I've had a feeling we've had an iron deficiency in our system for quite some time. A number of plants are showing a yellowing between the veins or chlorosis of the leaf. Now, it tends to happen mainly with the younger leaves because iron being an immobile element means it sticks pretty much well where it lands. So in the older leaves, it tends to stay there. But in the newer leaves, it yeah, basically shows up as the yellowing between the green veins. Other elements like nitrogen are a mobile element, which means that um, if there's a deficiency in some part of the plant, it will move around within the plant itself to where it's needed. So iron deficiency starts off, as I said, as a yellowing between the veins, also known as intervenial chlorosis. And from there, it can actually turn the whole leaf pale yellow until it turns white and you end up getting some necrotic spots or little dead spots on the leaves and around the edges itself. Now just to give you a couple of examples of the deficiency as I found it in our plants here, we have a Malabar spinach with the older leaves showing a little bit of the um, mottling or yellowing but between the veins and then as you move on down to the younger growth points you can see a distinct yellowing between the veins. On the Kangkong we've got the same story we've got a slight yellowing between the veins or chlorosis between the veins and the Warrigal greens over the back of the system have pretty much all the most extreme case of what I'm fairly sure is an iron deficiency. I have noticed lately that some of the growth points are starting to come green again that's because I dosed up the system last week fairly heavily with the iron. So I'm just going to run through a couple of different types of chelated iron you can use in your system to boost the iron levels and also run a test kit through its paces. This is one I've uh, bought online just so I know how much iron I've got in the system. And then I'll quickly run through in an equation that you can use so you know how much iron you can add into the system just to bring it up to acceptable levels. Now when it comes to adding iron into the system, it's a case of you can't exactly just throw an old iron rusty nail in there because unfortunately rust or iron oxide isn't plant available. What you're looking for are different iron chelates. There's EDTA which is generally used in soil and around the garden. It's basically available up to around about 6.5 pH. So it's something typically a lot of people won't use because most people like to keep their pH a little bit higher. EDDHA is a form of iron chelate that is available from the low pH right up to around about oh, I think it's 11 which is you know nowhere where you'd run your aquaponic system but it's pretty much all freely available on all ranges. Now unfortunately one drawback of using it is it turns your water red. Now, I've had some people complain that their um, water looks like Kool-Aid and they can't see their fish so they said they were never going to use it again. Instead they were going to start using DTPA because it's got an availability up to around about 7.5 on the pH scale. So well within the range that we like to use in our systems. When I started the old system I was told the general rule of thumb was three to four tablespoons of iron a month just to keep the iron levels nice and elevated. I've dropped the ball on this system here as you can tell obviously so that's why I'm going to get a little bit more scientific and use this test. As to how much iron is needed in the system, well Dr James Rakosi from the University of the Virgin Islands has suggested that two milligrams per litre is a fairly acceptable rate. So what I'll do now is I'll break out the test kit, we'll run it through its paces. So I just set up my little lab on a paver here. What we've got in the little test system is a chart has directions and just a little bit of a, um, a guide to let you know how much iron you have in the system and two bottles of reagent you got one and two or A and B so I'll just pop three drops of each in apparently um, just quickly too while you're here if you haven't um, subscribed to our channel now would be a good time to do so while I put these drops in two three and you can be brought along whenever I do aquaponic clips or backyard gardening clips you can say good day in the comments if you feel like it, or you can just sit back and watch. One, two, three. So I'll just give that a little bit of a swirl and we'll let it sit for three minutes. So it's actually a little bit longer than three minutes, and as you can see, we've got quite a dark colour there. 
I'd say it's darker than the one part per million. Um, closer, uh, closer to one than two though, so it might be a bit hard for you to see um, on the camera there. So it's definitely between the two of them. So a couple of uh, tablespoons of iron I popped into the system the other day I think has done the trick. So now we'll have a gander at the equation that you can use just to make sure you've got a certain part per million of iron in your system for those who want to be a little bit more scientifically minded. We do need to know a few things first. Number one, we need to know the soluble iron content of the iron chelate that we'll be using. Now the brand I'm using is 11.6%, but you do need to check the, the package or bottle of your brand just to see what percentage it is and substitute it where I've used 11.6%. The other thing we need to know is the volume of water we're dealing with. Now at a rough guesstimate, I'm saying that our system is 3000 litres just to make the job easy. So with these examples, we're going to take it that there's zero iron in the system and we want to bring them up to two parts per million or two milligrams per litre. So what we're trying to do with this equation is trying to work out how many milligrams of the iron we need to make up the two parts per million. So I'll do two examples of the equation. We'll do one in litres and then I'll follow on that one with one in gallons for you folks in the States. So two milligrams per litre also works out at two parts per million, so that makes our job here very easy. 11.6% is the amount of soluble iron in our iron chelate, and the system is 3,000 litres in volume. So to work out how much we need per litre, what we need to do is divide the two milligrams by 11.6%, and that gives us 17.2 milligrams per litre of water in our system. So to work out the total for the system, we multiply 17.2 by 3,000, and that gives us 51,600 milligrams. There's 1,000 milligrams in the gram, so we'll divide that by 1,000, and that gives us 51.6 grams. So we know we need 51.6 grams of iron chelate to give us two parts per million in a 3,000 litre system. Now for gallons, we need 7.56 milligrams per gallon of water in the system to give us two parts per million. So again, we're working with the 11.6% soluble iron, and this time we're going to use a 500 gallon system as an example. So we divide the 7.56 by 11.6, and that gives us 65.17 milligrams per gallon of water in the system. So we multiply that out, 65.17 by 500 gives us 32,585 milligrams. We can divide that by 1,000 to give us 32.59 grams. And then we can convert that into ounces and it gives us 1.1 ounce. So we know we need 1.1 ounce of this iron chelate to give us two parts per million of iron in a 500 gallon system. Adding the iron chelate into the system is pretty easy. All I do is just add a little bit, a couple of spoonfuls at a time, underneath the water inlet to the grow beds, and then that just washes it down straight into the root zone where the plants need it the most. The other option is you can mix a little bit in a jar with some water from the system, give it a good vigorous stir, and then pour that in at the same inlet point in the grow bed. You may find you might have to splash a bit of extra water in there just to get any dregs that are caught around the edge of the glass. So when it comes to other deficiencies in the system, um, the other two big ones are calcium and potassium. So with the calcium, I'm pretty lucky because I add in calcium hydroxide to help keep the pH at a level that I think it's manageable. But with potassium, I've been using this brand here from the Eco Organic Mob. It's uh, Eco Seaweed. It's got 16% potassium plus some other micronutrients. So I'm using this as a, a general um, additive to help with the magnesium and other um, minerals that may become deficient. I do hope that this clip has helped you out some though. And if this is the first time you've seen our channel you can hit that subscribe button and you'll get a notification whenever I upload a clip on the aquaponics or the backyard farm you can come along and say good day in the comment section down below I do hope your aquaponics system and your gardens are booming and I will catch you next clip folks cheers have a top one